Hey guys, in this video I wanted to go over the uh, importance of love, not only now, but also in the last days, because you will be truly tested in the last days, okay, uh, especially uh, since God is love, we must strive to be like Him. And to hold on to that love and practice that love that he has. Not the love that the world describes. Because that's false. That love is false. And it's conditioned love. For God's love is unconditional. To his children. Okay. So, um. I wanted to start with uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. And it basically defines, it defines God's love. It defines God's love, not the worldly love that everyone else is used to, but the love that God himself defines, that what is truly love, love, okay? In uh, 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 4, through seven, love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never hasty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. You hear that last part? That's that last part we got to know because when this occurs, many people will say, oh, you know, they didn't, many people who don't truly know biblical love will go back to defining earthly love. All right, you hear that? It says if someone you, it says if, if you love someone, you will be loyal to the him, no matter what the cost. All right? You will always believe in him. Always expect the best of him. And always stand your ground in defending him. Always stand your ground in defending him. Always stand your ground in defending him. This is biblical love. Not this earthly love. Always stand your ground. In defending him, that's defending truth. That's defending truth. Yet people people say, oh, that you're being rude. I'm not being rude. We're not being rude. I'm standing my ground in defending truth. And truth is Christ. And truth is the word of God. I'm basing this on biblical love, not worldly love. For worldly love, that definition is, uh, Satan defines that definition. And I don't define that type of love. This is that love, that, that's that love of uh, confusion. Worldly love is a love of confusion. But I will rest assured, I will rest on God's definition of love. For that love that I just defined, is God. God the scriptures say God is love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. God is love. God is that definition of love. What I just described is Him. Love is patient. God is patient. And kind. God is kind. Never jealous or envious. God is never jealous or envious. Never boastful or proud. Never hasty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do wrong. 
look at that. God hardly notices. Well, he notices when people do wrong, but does he uh, punish us instantly? No, because he's patient. Scriptures have said God is long-suffering, long-suffering for us to turn back to him. He knows we sin, but that's grace, that's mercy. He's waiting for us to turn to him, to change. But the thing is, there's going to come a time when he's not going to want to wait anymore. And when he's not, when he does not want to wait anymore, yet many of us will suffer the consequences of his wrath because we have not changed. In addition, it says, it is never glad about injustice. God isn't glad about injustice, but he will, he will rejoice whenever truth wins out. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost is. I love God. We love Christ, and we are loyal to Him, no matter what the cost is. This makes you go back to the first commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. Now, if you love Him, you will be loyal to Him no matter what the cost. Second greatest commandment, God said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you love someone... You'll be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You always believe in him, God. You always believe in him. You always expect the best of him. This is God towards us. And we always stand your ground in defending him. God is loyal to us. He always believes in us. He wants us to change. And he believes that we can change. And he causes us, he wants us to change, to do right by the Father, to do right by him. And he always expects the best of us. He always expects the best of us, but sometimes we don't do right. But he forgives, but you have to be willing to turn. But I'm getting off topic. Let me keep going. God says, love your enemies. This is especially for you in the last days. This is especially important that we must absorb the first and the second commandment, especially in these last days, for you will have enemies. God says, love your enemies. Love them. And what, that's, that's what I just defined. Kind, patient, never jealous, envious. Love them. He said, pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. He said, in that way, you will be acting like true children of God. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting like true children of God. This, by doing this, this will separate you from others who say they are children of God. Because of you, people will see and feel God. As, I, as the scriptures say in 1 John 4, 16, God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So if you hold on to that, if you practice that with all your heart and all your might, yes, people will see and feel God because God will reside in you. You are his temple. He said he doesn't live in temples made of uh, from men's hands. He doesn't live in buildings like that, that we make. But he lives in us because he made us. He lives in things that he made and we are he. And God lives in us. In Leviticus 19.18, he says, Do not seek revenge. Or bear a grudge against one of your people. But love your neighbors as yourself. Do not seek revenge. You heard him? Do not seek revenge. But be or bear a grudge. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people. But love your neighbor as yourself. That's love. That's God. That's God. And with this. 
people will see and feel God. This will separate you from others who say they are children of God. Okay? For it is God who causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God said, be like me. God said, be like me. Look, the sun shines on all of us. On the evil and the good. And he sends rain to both the evil and good. Be like him. For we are his children. For us to be his children, we must do exactly what he does. We must have same like-mindedness. We must have same like-minded us for God to claim us as his children. He said love them, for he loves them. He said in that way, you will be acting like your children of God. And I say these things and I push these things. Because you have to understand. We, we are living in a day now that lawlessness has increased. Lawlessness has increased. And due to this lawlessness, scriptures say, due to the increase of lawlessness, the love of most, the love of many will grow cold. Due to the increase of lawlessness, the love of most, the love of many will grow cold. But the thing is, your love should not be growing cold because you are not part of these people. You are not, you are not part of this most. You are not part of this many, for God has already called you out. God has said, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you'll be acting like true children of God. This will separate you from others. Because of you, people will see and feel God. And what is God? God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So while sin is increasing in these last days, and the love of many is growing cold and waxing colder and colder, your love should still remain. Your love should still be warm, hot. Not warm, hot. That's your love. Because what? This will show that you are God's child. Not by word of mouth, but by what you do and how people see you react to things. That people see these things. They notice these things. And also in Scripture it says in the book of Daniel, Sin will be rap sin will be rampant on earth. Sin will be rampant on earth. Why? The increase of lawlessness. Why? The daily especially when the daily sacrifices is cancelled. Especially when the daily sacrifices is cancelled by the Antichrist. Sin will be rampant. Lawlessness worldwide. 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 This one will be out of control. When the daily sacrifices is canceled by the Antichrist, sin will be rampant. This will be as in the days of Noah that Christ spoke about. This will be as in the days of Lot where Christ has spoke about. When the daily sacrifices is canceled, sin will become rampant. And this will definitely cool the love of many, but your love, if you are a child of God, should not go cold. This is what God has commanded this is a command. It's not if you want to, if you feel like it. God said, I command you to still love them. Love your enemies. Yeah, they will be your enemies. But he said, pray for those who persecute you. But your love should not grow cold. You have to understand when the daily sacrifices are canceled. It's nothing but a test. It's nothing but a test, and this test is to separate the sh the sh uh, the, the separate the uh, the true believers from the false believers. Right now, many can't really tell who are Christians and who are not, 
who are believers and who are not, who are the body of Christ and who are not. But that day will come where God will make it evident who are his and who are not when the daily sacrifices is canceled. That's when we will begin to see. When the daily sacrifices is canceled, sin becomes rampant, lawlessness shall increase, you will see those who will still love. As Christ has commanded us to love. You will see them. And you will see them. You will know without a shadow of a doubt. But when the daily sacrifices is taken away, truth in which we hold, righteousness is what, is, is what we hold as well. We hold on to righteousness. This is this obedience. This is this commandment. We hold on to that. But scriptures say, when the daily sacrifices is taken away, truth and righteousness shall die. Truth and righteousness shall die. The reason truth and righteousness are dying is because they're killing those who hold on to truth. This is this great persecution. This is this great persecution for those who remain. You're commanded by God. And those who before, they actually physically persecute you to death, even if you're sent to jail. What Christ says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against them, but love your neighbor as yourself, as you love yourself. Love your enemies, persecuted or not persecuted, who persecute you or who don't persecute you, who hate you and who don't hate you. Love them. Pray for them. And that way you'll be acting like the true children of God. This will separate you from others because you, because of you, people will see and feel God. Again, I say God is love. And all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. Pull it out a shadow of a doubt. No one can tell you that you're not a child of God. Look at your life. You're still loving. Still loving even in the midst of persecution. Like I said, this is a test. This is a test from God as God and Christ look down from heaven when the daily sacrifices is canceled. Those who hold on to the name of God, those who hold on to the name of Christianity, those who hold on stating that they are a believer, this is your test and God will see. God will see. For in Matthew it says, Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated. All over the world, all over the world, because you are my followers. Though you are hated, you are not to hate them. Though you are hated, you are not to hate them, but you are to love them. Do not seek revenge or bear grudges against one of your people, but love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. This is that time. And this is a good point of what Christ says. Many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. This is that separating of the uh, uh, the true believers from the false. This is that test. Let me read that again. Many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. Why? Because of that great persecution. Because of the great persecution, they will turn away from him. Because of the increase in lawlessness, they will turn away from him. They will not hold on to love. They will not love. That's why it's hard. You have to that's you have to uh seek the Lord. Hold on to uh, commandment, his commandments. First commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. With that, you're gonna love. You're gonna want to love. Because you love God and God is love. Continue, it says, sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Did you hear that? This is a test. He said, all of this will happen, but the love, I'm sorry, but the one who endures. So you're enduring persecution. You're enduring enemies who hate you. You're praying for those who persecute you. 
You're showing them that God lives in you by loving them as you love yourself. For you're showing them that God is love. And what you're doing is is because God is truly in you. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. He said, but the one who endures to the end, you will be saved. You will be saved. So right now, there's a lot of people that's professing themselves as believers. Once saved, always saved. But many of those once saved, always saved will fall away. Their love will grow cold. They will not love in the last days. They will not hold on to the greatest second commandment. They will not hold on to the first commandment. For the first commandment says, "Love your God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might." If you love, the, if you obey the first commandment, then the second commandment is automatic. The second commandment is automatic because of the first commandment. I just needed to put that video out there. This is a reminder. This is also me telling myself that that I need to also do this as well. Because I know in the last days, even to this day, people will try your patience. People will do all types of things to you because they want to see a reaction. They want you to burst out in rage, in anger, in hate. But God says, no, you are to endure persecution. You are to, do, in, to endure hate. Christ endured it while he was on earth. He endured all that while he was on earth. They hated him. They persecuted him. They flogged him. They spat on him. Yet he didn't lift a finger. Because God is in him, that love that God is pushing us to have. It's telling us to have. Christ endured Unto death he endured. They killed him. They flogged him. They tortured him. They spat on him. They whipped him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They cursed him. They mocked him. They they uh, nailed him to the cross. Yet he didn't speak a lick of hate. He didn't curse him. Curse them. He didn't lay a finger on them. The strongest person is one who can hold themselves. For when you are in Christ, you no longer belong to yourself. So if they revile you, they curse you, they hate you, why are you offended? For this is not you. This is the God that you uh, worship. This is the God that you worship. Christ said, they don't hate, they hate you because of me. They don't hate you because of you. They hate you because of me. Because he's truth. The world doesn't like truth. But Christ said those who endure, those who still have that fiery love, are the ones who will be saved. This is a test. This is a test. While this is going on, God the Father is watching. Christ is watching. This is separating the sheep, the sheep, the uh, uh, the wheat from the shaft, the goat from the sheep. But many goats are many goats are among sheep, saying that they're sheep. Well, once the daily sacrifices is canceled, once lawlessness con increases, once sin becomes rampant, you will see the true colors of many of those who profess themselves as believers. And this is done on purpose, for this is a test from God. For not only he already knows and will see, but we ourselves who have that spiritual understanding, that spiritual discernment, we will truly see who are the true body of Christ. Y'all have any questions or comments? Leave it. Take care.